Cisco's Talos Security Group, we've talked about uh, actually more and more recently. Uh, these guys are doing a great job, sort of the, in the same way that that uh, Goog that Google's team is uh, looking at just in general at things in the industry and giving them a once over. And in this case, uh, Tyler Bohan uh, of Cisco Talos discovered five remote execution uh, code vulnerabilities in the in various pieces of image rendering code in OS 10 uh, and also iOS that is in the, the latest versions before this very recent update. So he, of course, did responsible disclosure, informed Apple, they fixed it. And so once the patches were out and available, uh, we got the news of that. And so, and I call this a stage fright bug because it's very reminiscent of stage fright. As we know, of course, the stage fright was, was dogging, or actually still really, is a, is a module dogging Android because it, it handles a lot of the media processing. And in the case of, of Android, where the, when we first saw stage fright happen, it was the, just receiving a multimedia uh, SMS, an MMS message, would would that the image in the multimedia uh, uh, event would automatically be processed by the stage fright module. And because there was a mistake there in the parsing of this the image, it would allow a bad guy to to essentially put their own code in with the image uh, and get it to execute. Well, Apple got hit by the same thing. And in, in a very similar way, one of the things we've been talking about the last few months is that the difficulty of, of not making a mistake when you're coding an interpreter because an interpreter, the, the, the person coding that interpreter sort of assumes that what it's interpreting will be sane, that, it, you know, that it's going to interpret valid input because why wouldn't it? Well, it turns out bad guys have exactly a dip, the, the, exactly the opposite approach. They look for subtle mistakes in the interpretation path that they can take advantage of. So in this case, uh, and there's an interesting lesson here we'll get to at the end, the, 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 the big mistake was in Apple's handling of, believe it or not, TIFF files, <laughs> the tagged image file format, which, you know, I am having to tell people what TIFF stands for because, you know, unlike, you know, PNG, JPEG, uh, and, and, and GIF or GIF, however you pronounce it, few people these days even see a TIFF file. But in case one comes along, the code is still there for handling it. So, uh, what what Talos wrote, I thought was just so good, I, I I couldn't even paraphrase it and without changing anything. So that they they said, the tagged image file format is a file format that's popular with graphic artists, photographers, and the publishing industry because of its ability to store images in a lossless format. TIFF was created to try to establish a common scanned image file format in the mid 80s. Cisco Talus has discovered a vulnerability in the way in which the image IO API parses and handles tiled TIFF image files. When rendering what when rendered by applications that use the image IO API, a specially crafted TIFF image file can be used to create a heap-based buffer overflow and ultimately achieve remote code execution on vulnerable systems and devices. This vulnerability is especially concerning as it can be triggered in any application that makes use of the Apple Image IO API when rendering tiled TIFF images. This means that an attacker could deliver a payload 
that successfully exploits this vulnerability using a wide range of potential attack vectors, including iMessages, malicious web pages, MMS messages, or other malicious file attachments opened by any application that makes use of the Apple Image IO API for rendering these types of files. Further, depending on the delivery method chosen by an attacker, this vulnerability is potentially exploitable through methods that do not require explicit user interaction since many applications, i.e. iMessage, automatically attempt to render images when they are received in their default configurations. As this vulnerability affects both OS 10, 10.11.5, and iOS 9.3.2, and is believed to be present in all previous versions, again, this is old code, the number of affected devices is significant. So um, I sent out a note, I think it was just yesterday, um, as I was digging into this more, because I was aware of 9.3.3, that is iOS 9.3.3, but and I think maybe only one of about, I don't know, I have about 12 iOS devices. Uh, I, I manually updated. Not a single one of them did that by itself. And so I wanted to alert everyone, you know, this would be a good time to go just, you know, check to see if there's an update available and you'll probably say, it'll say, yes, we've got one. And it's like 50 megabytes uh, and, you know, requires a regular reboot and restart and so forth. But uh, for, for, for what it's worth and for whatever reason, not one of my devices did this on its own. Um, and for something like this, this doesn't want to hang out there for too long because as we know, once bad guys realize there is an exploitable flaw, especially in iOS, where these generally are rare, um, and the, and these guys didn't talk about what privilege the code, the execution code would have, but uh, it you know it may very well be highly privileged uh, execution. This could be bad. So that's one of four. I won't go into the same detail with the other three or at least the, the middle two, one was a, a similar problem, and again, a remote code execution in the open EXR file format, and actually there were two vulnerabilities there, um, and the TIFF only had one vulnerability. They also found a problem with the digital asset exchange file format, one vulnerability, and then also in the BMP, old standard bitmap, file format. And they and they wrote, they had a little short write-up for that. They said the BMP file format is both long-standing and has a fairly straightforward structure. The BMP file header contains information about the size, layout, and type of image. A vulnerability exists within the way that the height property of an image is handled. This can be exploited when a specially crafted BMP image file is saved, then opened, and part of the size information is manipulated. Yeah, let me guess. The it's exploit... more than 65,635 pixels <laughs> tall or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the exploit leads to an out-of-bounds write resulting in remote code execution when opened in any application using Apple Core Graphics API. So then to paraphrase a little bit, uh, they, they said image files are an excellent vector for attacks since they can be easily distributed over web or email traffic without raising the suspicion of the recipient. These vulnerabilities are all the more dangerous because Apple Core Graphics API, SceneKit, and ImageIO are used widely by software on the Apple OS X platform. And then they said organizations should patch software to the latest release in order to resolve these vulnerabilities. Additionally, organizations may wish to consider blocking, and this is, this is what I wanted to get to, should consider blocking files at network gateways if the file is of a type that is never or very rarely going to be encountered within the legitimate business of the organization. 
for example, TIFF files. And, and that's significant because most companies could completely sail along with no TIFF files crossing their internet to intranet boundary. It just, you know, the file, you just don't in, in, in run across the file format any longer. Yet it's still supported for legacy reasons. So sort of in the same way that we've switched our firewall concept from block what's bad and allow everything else, we've switched it around to, to drop everything, block, that is block everything, and then selectively open the traffic that we know we want. It, it really does make some sense to consider where you have the ability to do content, content filtering to, to look at all the file formats that are around. And if you don't recognize them, <laughs> you know, you probably don't need that. And just say, uh, no. I mean, and the worst that could happen is that an exception would have to be made in, in a specific instance. But, for example, anyone who had that kind of firewall up, who was blocking TIFF files because when's the last time you saw one go by, um, even if this were exploited in a zero-day fashion, and it, as far as anyone knows, it has never been exploited. That is, this a Apple fixed this before... This got out because Cisco Talos reported it responsibly. But, but the point would be that this is the kind of thing that if you were preemptive, your corporation would be protected, you know, even if it, even if it were found. And it, it generally is this legacy code that is, you know, that tends to bite people. So, and happily, you know, things like Flash is becoming legacy as we move to HTML5. So you want iOS 9.3.3 or OS 10, 10.11.6 or later because th those, those releases had these things fixed. Uh, and, and again, uh, I had to do it manually. So I would suggest iOS users uh, who are concerned about this, you may just make sure you, that your devices are running the latest. 